looking at four common stains and the proper procedure to remove those stains. The first stain that we're going to look at is, is just a common soft drink spill and just want to go over the procedure on how to properly remove that. The first thing that you want to do when you have a spill of a soft drink or, or any type of liquid is you want to use a, a white towel and you want to tamp this area. You never want to take your towel and rub the carpet because you could damage the fiber. So you want to tamp the area, then you want to use a, a carpet spotter and just spray that area and continue tamping the area with your towel to remove as much liquid as you can. And after you've tamped the area, if you have a portable spotting extractor, you can rinse the area with water and extract that contaminant completely away from the carpet. The next spot we're gonna show is essentially it's a coffee spill. Uh, these are common spills uh, throughout any facility. Uh, with, with coffee, unfortunately, sometimes if it sits there long enough, the coffee can actually bond itself with the carpet fibers. It becomes a little more difficult to remove. Uh, unfortunately, we, we do not live in a perfect world. If, or if someone would spill coffee, they would come let someone know with them, the janitorial staff, and it would be very simple to remove if, if you could get to it within, say, 24 hours. Unfortunately, sometimes it sits there. It could be, be there for a week before you can get to it. So there are some common uh, specialty spotters on the market, and that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. Uh, we're going to demonstrate a process called heat transfer where you use a, a, a steam iron on the lowest steam setting. You would actually use your specialty spotter and, and spray. If it's a baseball size spot, it would just be a couple of sprays. Once you spray your chemistry, you can take a clean white cloth that's been slightly dampened uh, under a faucet. Always just put the cloth just over where you have sprayed. Use your steam iron on the lowest steam setting. Always being careful not to let the iron touch the actual carpet fibers and never let your towel dry out. This heat transfer process, you basically would just, once your chemistry is applied, you would use a five to five second interval to move the iron across that spot. And as you do that, the process of wicking is occurring. If you're familiar with wicking, I'll show this, how that it wicks the stain up into the cloth. Uh, if you've ever set a, a roll of paper towels up on a countertop that may be wet, and within, say, an hour or so, the, the entire roll of paper towels is wet. That is essentially the physics of wicking. That wicking action is, is, is you're actually speeding that process up with the heat, the heat transfer. And as that wicks into the towel, you may have to uh, apply it, the chemistry more than one time. You would just respray it and continue using the five second intervals. And then anytime you, you complete this process, as Daryl mentioned, you want to follow up with an extraction process with just plain hot water in your extraction tank to remove any remaining residue that may be left behind from that process. The third spot we're going to look at is just a regular soil spot. A lot of times whenever you clean an area or a spot in your carpet and it looks good, and then say two days later or a week later, that spot returns and you wonder, I know that that area looked good. Why is it dark again? And what that is is, is can be, which we will demonstrate, is you add a little bit of water to see if you have too much soap residue. You just take a plastic spotting spatula or a plastic spoon, credit card, and you can just agitate that water. And if you see suds appear, well then that tells you that you have too much soap in your carpet. So the best way to remove that then is to wet that area Take your, your towel to tamp the area with your towel and blot. And then as we mentioned earlier, you want to use a portable spotting extractor and rinse that area with hot water and extract the contaminant away from the carpet. The next and the last one that we're going to show is, is chewing gum. Uh, chewing gum is common if, if you're in a school setting. Chewing gum can be a very common uh, stain. It's important to know when you're looking at any stain, the solubility of this, the stain that you're talking about. In this example, say chewing gum for example, if I were to chew a piece of chewing gum and I put it in a glass of water, the gum would never dissolve, it would never go away because it's not water soluble. Chewing gum is a, it requires a solvent spotter to remove it. Other things that are solvent soluble are adhesive and, and grease. If you have a, a, an adhesive on a carpet fiber and you use a water-based cleaning chemical, you'll be there all day trying to remove that grease because it's not gonna break it down. It, it requires a solvent-based cleaner. So for this example, 
we're going to show how to remove gum by just applying a little bit of a solvent cleaner. This is a, a gel solvent and you would just apply a little bit of the gel solvent around the chewing gum. You would use your spotting spatula or as he mentioned just a, a blunt object like the back end of a spoon and you would agitate that chewing gum and that solvent around the chewing gum. Usually let it sit for just a two, two to three minutes and after two to three minutes it will begin to emulsify the chewing gum. The chewing gum will almost bring it back to a chewed state and that as you continue to but agitate that. Chew it, right? Yeah, you do not want to chew that. <laughs> As you uh, continue to agitate the chewing gum and the solvent around the chewing gum, it will begin to emulsify and dissolve, and it will almost just peel away. Just continue to agitate the solvent around the gum. Once you can get the gum completely removed, you would just follow up with a hot water extraction rinse with plain hot water in the tank of your extractor. Anytime a solvent cleaner is used, uh, just like cleaning residues can attract soil from your shoes, the solvent residue will actually be a soil attractor as well. Anytime you get a footstep across that solvent residue, that solvent residue is going to pull soil from your shoes. So solvent cleaners are effective shoe cleaners. So always follow up with a hot water extraction rinse in your portable spotting extractor. So these are just some common spots that, that you may see in your everyday cleaning attempts and some proper ways to, to remove those spills. So. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of what type of cleaners are necessary and the methods necessary to remove those spots. To view more quick clips, visit ISSA.com.